Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Webcomic Book Club podcast. I'm Zay. I'm Mech. And this week, we are talking about Monster Pulse. That won the raffle last time, which was your recommendation, actually, to put in here. Yes, and I was so excited to have us review it. Um, Why? I think it's a very fun comic with a rather original concept, honestly. Now, for people who don't actually keep up with the with the comics that are being read, which shame on you, it's a book club, uh, what is the premise of the comic? The premise of the comic is there's a secret like group or a secret military operation or um, government operation creating what are called ghosts, which are basically a manifestation of a certain type of energy. And when these ghosts come in contact with a human, they will um, be they will essentially possess a part of that human and remove it from the host that part will become a monster um and will basically just follow the human's commands for the most part it basically just becomes a pet almost for in most cases and it basically it follows a girl named bina who her heart was what was taken all right you did a pretty good job um there's actually like four main characters yeah um there's Oh jeez, I have them written down. But Bina, terrible. Julie, um, oh, Bina, Bina, whose heart? Julie has her hair that was taken. Uh, I only remember Rixus. I don't remember the guy who owns him. <laughs> um, and Guzzy, who has West. West, thank you. I, I remember also, the monsters. I also don't remember the guy's name. I think it's Kyle or something stupid like that. No, right? it was so, it was something it's never he chose. Something simple. It it was something he chose because he thought it sounded cool. Yeah, so, which much. makes it really hard to remember. Yeah. Um, so I'm actually really happy you recommended this comic. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I thought you might. It's interesting. It's a little bit quirky, and it's got a very set art style. I actually that was one of the first things I was talk about. The art style changed hugely. Not so much changing from one style to another as much as just massive improvement. Yeah, I would give you that. I mean, it seems though they experimented a lot with different uh, art styles for it. Uh, a couple arcs were um, kind of the cliche comic book style. Um, other ones were like super thick outlines, super thin inlines, things like that. So they were definitely experimenting. They were having a lot of fun with it. Yeah. I mean, it was never a case of like they just didn't know what to do. It seems as though they were just working to improve what they were doing. Yeah. So I can't really complain much about this. And that's always something that I have to worry about is a long running comic having a lot of art discrepancies which by the way this comic has been running since may of 2011 i'm and, super impressed with that and it's still updating it's still updating consistently yes and that's fantastic and didn't they uh almost immediately start doing like three comics a week type of deal something like that yeah yeah it's, yeah they almost instantly went into a very fast-paced schedule which makes their art style like amazing yeah i mean it's not colored only recently has it been colored but yeah. for the longest time, like it was completely excusable not to be. It was completely okay. It was perfectly fine to. Yeah, be, they were uh, able to compensate for the lack of color very well. Mm -hmm. uh, except for the heart. Yeah, the heart was a little bit difficult. So the heart is blue. But the way they compensated for it without color was by making it black. Yeah. So I don't know why, but even though the icon for the comic is like the blue heart the top banner for the comic it has the blue heart in it and recently the the it's all been in color so i see the character as blue all the time i still think it's supposed to be red i just <laughs> every time i think of the freaking character it's like it's red yeah it's red I, it's red it makes no sense like it's red in my head but it's it's blue everywhere else yeah um i have that same issue with rixus i can never remember that he's green really what color i do you always think, think he's supposed to be white that makes a lot of sense. So Rixus is uh, that character's eye that yeah. was taken instead. And it's basically this little draconic thing that can fly around. Uh, we should mention that these organs are all usable at, for their original functions. They're just detached from the body. So Bina's heart still acts like a heart. It still circulates her blood. It's just not in her. Uh, what's his nuts can see through Rixus. <laughs> what's his nuts? His name is Abel. <laughs> Abel. His name is Abel. Okay. Um, uh, that's actually... Uh, you had the bolt to cast page for that, but honestly, I don't remember either. Um, 
one thing that I thought was very funny about this, and I don't know why, but the comic page, I, the com- the page setup is very good. This person is a very, very competent artist, very confident in what they do, and they've been doing this for a very long time. Um, but I love how their cast page and about page are the exact same thing. Their about page says absolutely nothing. They have a page for new readers, but they don't have, they have basically a non-existent about page. I think. I find that funny. <laughs> I'm not positive. I think those might actually be more recent additions to the site. I so I assumed so. Um, yeah, when I was saying that um, this uh, this artist has done this for a long time, uh, this isn't their first comic. Um, they actually had a slice of life comic before this. Now we haven't said the artist's name yet. We're about it waiting till the very last minute to talk about that type of stuff. Um, but it was Magnolia Porter is the artist for this artist and writer for this comic. Um, but they do, they used to do a different comic. Uh, I have it here. Bob white, Bob white. Yes. Bob white. And, uh, it was a slice of life comic by a bunch of artists in Rhode Island. Um, I which, wonder where, where they're from. <laughs> yeah. I, I wonder, I wonder where this idea came from. I wonder how this, how this was thought of. Um, so it was, very interesting to kind of see that and you could see where the style got started from that as well but the very last page they announced two comics they were making after that um which is monster pulse and another one and then while i was reading monster pulse i always read the descriptions on the bottom because they always say a lot of stuff and a lot of other things interesting to note down uh they released another comic so they're working on three comics now I know that comic was like a one-off. You can just like pay 12 bucks and you get like a 240 some odd page comic. Holy crap. About a guy who has like a fascination with mob movies, uh, trying to get after his ex-wife and his like 11 year old daughter comes to help him because she's really street smart. That's what that comic is about. (laughs) (laughs) And that's called the good crook. And that sounds amazing. I might actually end up picking that one up. I am absolutely going to keep track with, of this of this artist. I'm going to keep track of what they do. Yeah. I, they reliably make things I really enjoy. Wow. I don't have a whole lot to really talk about this. We've pretty, we've talked about the art style. It's solid. It's been, it's been experimenting, uh, experimenting a little bit, but not too far outside the bounds of its normal art. Um, good story. It's kept its pace rather nicely. It seems like it was written before they started doing anything in the comic for it. Like, they had the entire story, it seems. Uh, a couple of the story things I did have a bit of an issue with. Yeah? Yeah, I will say that much. As of late, I like it seems as though randomly at some point in the comic, or in the comic's runtime, they just decided to have like a bunch of romance stuff thrown in. Yeah, and I noticed that, but... Yeah, it was always like hints of that, and like they even had a poll once where they did uh, like characters you would ship, yeah, um, and things like that. And I thought that was really cute. And then suddenly it's like, yeah, no, this is like what we're going to be focusing on for like you know a very long time. Now that being said, with the most recent like dramatic art change that at least that I noticed, um, it does seem like they were trying to make these kids look like they're in high school, like late high school. So that does make a little bit of sense. It. I will agree with you, though. It is a little bit odd that it didn't show up too much beforehand. Yeah, it was like the most it showed up in were like fan art pieces that people had submitted and they had for, for comic pages. So I kind of a weird thing there, though. They did an OK job using it as an excuse to bring things in, um, bring in the character Edward, whose face got taken. These yeah. aren't just organs. These are any part yeah, of the body, any part of their body. Hence uh, Julie's hair. Yeah. Um, but his face was taken. And by the way, his skeleton, like his, his skull underneath threw me for a loop yeah. because I know what a skull looks like. Oh. That thing looks like a Viking helmet. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that like she, the dramatic reveal was like, she punched him and like the face jumped off because the face didn't want to be hit. Mm-hmm. Um, and so she just like punched his skull and I seriously thought he was a robot. I was so confused. I thought he was just a robot. I was like, holy crap, is that what this evil organization is doing? They're making robots now with, like, synthetic skin? No, it was far less interesting. Yeah, well, I mean, but not many people are going to notice the the difference between the anatomy of a skull and his his head. Dude, it's a pretty big difference. Not many people are going to know that difference, though. 
okay i really can't say i really can't say much beyond that because that's something that i know very well owning multiple skulls already <laughs> so um i mean i guess that is something for me but i thought it was very funny and it always kind of bugged me a little bit just the way that the skull was designed still fit better in her style though so yeah i'll give them that yeah, yeah um, if they had done a realistic skull it just wouldn't have looked quite right yeah and then all the stuff with uh violet i loved violet she was far and away the most relatable character for me i instantly called out her big reveal yeah instantly i was like i was a little bit like thinking about it i wasn't quite sure um uh, are we gonna spoil it um well the purpose of this uh purpose of this book club is for people to keep up with us so if you don't know it that's true then read the freaking thing already just pause all right they should be back now um it's her brain yeah she has a monster which is not revealed for quite some time it was like it, was, it wasn't even hinted she, at or anything she yeah was she was strange. made out to be like this normal well not normal but this monsterless very very like almost mentally hindered but in very intelligent way. Yes. The type where they have no social cues and yeah, that type of way. Yeah. Um, and I always thought she was just very strange, but then people kept on saying it's like, Oh, you know, she just kind of like started getting all this strangeness. And like when they went to, went to her house and like, you saw photos of her like playing soccer and all happy. I was like, yeah, she has a monster. It's a brain. <laughs> it's like, it just now, did you call why she doesn't have those emotional cues anymore? No, I didn't. That I thought was kind of interesting. That is very interesting. I, so, uh, I very much like that. All the reason why she kind of lost all the emotional cues was when she kind of lost her brain but gained a pet. Um, <laughs> if only <laughs> well, they had a brain. To be fair, it, they count themselves as the same being. Yes. Um, but when that happened, uh, basically all their emotions got amplified. Yeah, just all every part, every aspect of her brain power got amplified, including emotions. So to have emotions was to be very, very like problematic, basically. Very easily so they, overwhelmed. Yes, and so they stopped it. They just stopped having emotions or yeah. their repressed emotions and the like. Um, yeah. But I actually thought she was very interesting because she thought she was perfect because yes. of that brain power. She thought yes. she could never make a mistake and everything she was doing was for the better of everyone. And then it was revealed to her that like, no, you messed up with this, severely messed up. And you need to go fix it. And so that's kind of where she went. So yeah, it, it kind of broke down that wall of like her trying to be the one who's be, who's trying to be better than everyone else. It kind of broke that down and it seems like they're actually going to have her hang out with the main cast more. It seems as though people don't like her. <laughs> really? It's only Avil that likes her. Everyone else is like, you know, we're not friends, but I don't hate you. Yeah. That well, type of thing. So, uh, but I fully agree. I, yeah, I think I can see her hanging around. I, um, I can see her coming back later for a few things, uh, but they're definitely going to take a break from her because of how much she was in the comic for oh, such yeah. a oh, long yeah. time. She was basically the main, the main antagonist for that. Yeah. For that for, entire arc. Yep. Um, how about the guy with the, with the pituitary gland? Oh man, he had a <laughs> rough time. So, ba uh, basically, the his pet, which oh, they named, he got, he named it. I don't remember. He what. named it something normal, which is why I don't remember. <laughs> no, wait, it wasn't something normal. It was, it was okay. He basically made it out like it was his kid or something, but um, he ended up naming it something that kind of sounded kind of badass. So, um, but basically, it like a gland in his brain got turned into a monster. And it was the one that regulates growth. Yeah. And so the monster thought he was being very childish. So it turned him into a child. Yeah. Um, Which is funny because when they like caught him and brought him, like saved him from the evil organization, which by the way is called Shell. I thought yeah. that was a little bit funny because that's the name of a gas company. Um, but you know, it's gas, ghosts, monsters. They're all the same thing. I was going to say evil corporation, evil corporation and gas company. But oh. um, when he, uh, they, broke him out of there and brought him back. He was like, where's my jacket? Where's my jacket? And they're like, oh, it's, it's right here. He's like, and he immediately whips out a bunch of cigarettes and tries yeah. to slide up a cigarette. I thought he was going to be like this on the streets kid. I thought so point. too. Yeah. I did not see that coming at all. What had happened. And then he was so amazed. Like what happened to me? Like, wow, why am I a child? I was like, I don't know either, dude. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, he makes it with his girlfriend and they are now raising the monster in 
in preparation for having a kid someday, which is super kind of adorable. Yeah, it is kind of adorable. Especially considering, you know, the monster is going to be harder to raise. I mean, your kid can never turn you into a smaller being than than it. So, yes, but <laughs> I I can't think of it like anything that a kid can do worse, but I mean whatever. Um, kid can ruin you emotionally. That was interesting. And then later on when um uh when they run into him in the street market and he just has him in like a yeah. like the, a baby pouch yeah like, like a baby pouch on his chest i thought it's so cute i love that i love the pituitary the pituitary gland wow uh for how long this comic has been running there's not like a whole lot that we can really speak of it there's we not ran and over I it very well i think the main issue is we both liked it yeah <laughs> huh. uh but yeah i i would highly recommend people uh read this comic or at least give it a try and obviously i would do the same yeah, and you were the one who recommended it to me, pretty much. Uh, that's why I said, obviously. All right, so should we roll the next one? It seems too early to roll for the next one. It does. We're only, like, what, 16, 17 minutes in? Uh, yeah, about. So, I'm... Wow, I guess There's... we'll just roll for the next... We don't really have a set time for this. We have a max time for this, so... Yeah, I guess. A... Yeah. Let's just so, yeah, let's it. roll it. So, the next one we're going to be reading is Kiwi Blitz. Ooh, this sounds interesting. Now, this is... I actually was thinking like, oh man, what are the odds we're going to get Kiwi Blitz? Oh, that's never going to happen because there's a fucking, that, the artist for Kiwi Blitz did a guest comic for Monster Pulse. Are you, really? Yes. I'm 100% serious. One of the guest comics early on was from this artist. What a great segue then. That is a fantastic segue. So I rediscovered Kiwi Blitz. I had stopped reading it for the longest time, Um, but from what I remember of it, I kind of just refound it, threw it in the list. Yeah. Uh, from what I remember of it, this person uh, has a like mech, like a giant mech that they use for contests for fighting, like protecting people and stuff. Um, and they're kind of common for people to have, or not common for people to have, but it's a thing that people can have. Like you can get one it's of these. It's not rare to have one. Yeah, it's kind of like a really, really nice car. Think of it that way. Um, and theirs is a giant kiwi. And it's like the bird, right? Not yeah, the, the bird. The bird kiwi. <laughs> 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 um. And what I find funny is that one of its main attacks is it shoots its beak like a drill. <laughs> Horn drill. Horn drill, basically. Um, it's a really, really strong peck attack. So uh, next week will be Kiwi Blitz at KiwiBlitz.com. That's Blitz with a Z. Kiwi Blitz. Blitz. We'll be meeting in a couple of weeks. Oh, uh, shite. What day is that? That would be the 30th. What? 30th. So, yeah, the next one will be going up on the 30th. Um. We'll see you then. Yeah, see you then. Have a good one. Bye.